All right, what is, what's up? I got a video in the cut. Um, I'll just have to check to see if I'm recording. This is going to be a really short video just because I don't think, like, Chapter 72 felt like there were moments that would obviously matter. I mean, such as creating mini chakra beasts. That felt like something that has relevancy, right? But 73 feels like the most set up chapter of all the time. Like, it just, there's nothing that feels weighty. There's some cool moments, some good dialogue, some emotion. Uh, we have Baruto and Team 7 coming together for the first time in a minute. Uh, they're getting their mission, you know, but even in Chapter 72 had the more emotional moment where he's talking to Hinata and Himawari. Uh, I, <laughs> so I'm not going to sit here and just tell you, okay, this is a, uh, this is a pretty mad chapter, but I will say that there's obviously some value in some moments here, right? Like, when we have this dialogue that Shikamaru expresses to the guys, well, we found out that Otsutsuki are immune to the effect. That matters, right? So, pretty much at this point, Baruto and by extension, um, what's his name? Momoshiki, as well as Lover Boy, they both understand that they're pretty much the only two things that can stop Ko or Ida from just coming through and wrecking shop. Um, and all these kids are pretty much tasked. What a one thing that makes this relevant is that we are reinvolving at least other members of Team Seven because, as you may recall, uh, Mitsuki and Sarada have not done a, a damn thing, and I don't know how many chapters. <laughs> is the last time when they were facing the uh, the big dude that tried to like eat him or whatever? Was it the last time that they faced anybody of consequence? I don't remember them having a moment of value since then. Because then we had, after that, I believe, I want to say Code came along, and then Naruto, or Baruto, had to kind of scrabble with him a little bit. And then after that, I don't remember Sarda or uh, Mitsuki. I don't know if it's actually his name. I think it might be Mitsuki. But they didn't do anything. At all since then, a, a value really. I mean, it's just keeping the book. Uh, so, I, if I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments. But it's just cool to get somebody else instead of Baruto and Kawaki involved. And we have the little kid who's very uh, acute uh, and and uh, insightful, very sus of Amado, Amado, and uh, she. Clearly, I mean, she just says what, like, the reader says in a lot of instances. She thinks what the reader thinks a lot. She's almost like a, a vehicle for the, uh, the, the mangaka to kind of express what, you know, he kind of wants you guys to be thinking about. Uh, if we get to a couple chapters back. Yeah, so she says that, you know, she just wants a romance. Like, she's thinking from a girl's perspective, and Sarda... If you look at Sarada's like parents, bro, Sarada's parents are not about like love, dude. So we have a young girl that knows something about real emotion that a, a actual female would have, and she's like, okay, Ida just wants to be a, a normal girl with you know, kind of quirky little kid, you know, quote unquote love. Like that's what she's trying to express. That's all Ida has going on in her brain. Uh, at least that's what the mangaka wants you to think. The mangaka wants you to think that Ida is doing this purely out of some weird crush, and clearly with her power, uh, love and charm is a big part of her character, so I'm not necessarily saying that there's more than a line meaning. It could really be all lit. I mean, we've seen some very uh, massive things happen because of very shallow reasoning. Cough, cough, obito, chia. Um, you know, that's just things that... <laughs> Obito's motivation will always be one of the one of the low points of... Uh, of the big three. Uh, <laughs> so we go from there, and then I guess another big moment that we kind of get from there is it appears at this point the moment she can just kind of come out and kind of spook Boruto whenever he kind of damn well pleases. And it seems that Sasuke still has the capability to sense that Momoshiki is out and about uh, even when... He doesn't, even without his Rinnegan, uh, well, actually, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, no, this is a flashback, yeah. So, Sasuke's Rinnegan is gone, as we all know, but he's still able to, just off his sensory abilities, maybe a shrine gone in part, uh, he can still feel what's happening. I don't, I mean, it literally cut off at a point where it's almost impossible to know what was up, 
but it's also something that uh that Kawaki can sense. As you can see, we have Momoshiki's cloak right here in this corner, and we also see him right there. Uh, almost in a situation Naruto can't even see him. So it's like, at this point, are we in a, a situation where Momoshiki is finding a way to pretty much eke out of Naruto? Kind of like a cracked vase, almost. Like, the seal was put on, but he's still finding a way out of there. It's possible, you know? But it's clearly something they want to let on as far as the importance of uh, Momoshiki being a presence, even with, you know, Naruto's medicine, Boruto's medicine, being killed, all those various d different things. Uh, it's still clear that, that Kawaki, or uh, Momoshiki is a factor in this. Uh, I guess the only really, really big, th big thing is that uh, Shikamaru said everything he said, knowing that Ida was watching. Uh, there's a lot of pivoting going on here, which I feel like we never got enough politicizing in Naruto and Shippuden. I mean, Shippuden, there was some intellect that went on, especially in the Shikamaru moments. Uh, there's some smart individuals, obviously, between uh, some of the higher Kotsky leaders, uh, Shikamaru, Madara. I mean, there was definitely some strategizing that went on, but I feel like we never got some of the brain power in, in you know, just in real depth that we probably should have had between some of the potential intellects in that series, like Itachi, Sasuke, Kabuto, Orochimaru, I mean, all these dudes that, I, Kabuto, yeah, I would say to agree, Kabuto actually did some pretty high-level chess things there, uh, then he gets basically, he gets the rug pulled from under her by Itachi's ass pull, depending on how you view uh, Izanami, um, Itachi was a very, like, there's a lot of guys who were smart, but they were smart in since strictly a fighter way, Guys like Kabuto, uh, guys like Obito, that, Obito, Obito, Obito that planned out things, uh, Shikamaru's. I really, I, there's a lot of high intellect people that just didn't show intellect in more than just, I'm smart enough to have pulled this move or have free plan this move. I don't know what I wanted this series, but it's just, it always felt like, I always felt like Bleach had really s smart characters on paper, right? And even though Bleach had a lot of dumb moments, or the really cheap moments were like, oh, I got this character dead to rights, and now the Mangakas are mega to where I suddenly had this ass pull that got me out of the situation the whole time, and I planned about it for thousands of years in advance. Like, very shitty explanations, but, like, you could see, like, the gears turning to where Bleach had smart characters that acted smart. And not just in a fighter sense. Like, Aizen is smart in any given sense. Even though his hubris got him cooked. Kisuke Ohara is smart in any sense. The problem with me, or what I, what I feel, is that outside of the fight, I don't think we ever got enough high intellect moments out of... Um, I'll, I'll give you a Shikamaru or Asuma or something like that, but like... I don't know. It's just, I just felt, I felt like it should be more intellectual moments in Naruto because of how many high intellect people they had. A Kakashi, a Sasuke. And some of those guys, actually, the more I kind of delve into it, some of those guys did have their moments. Kakashi, Sasuke, Shikamaru, Asuma. Those, they did have moments outside of just fighting uh, where they proved that they were geniuses. Uh, but that kind of that secondary level of guys that weren't exactly primary main characters, uh, you know, you would like to see a little more of them, I guess. Naruto just has so many of them, right? And I feel like Baruto has done at least a little bit more of trying to show you that they actually want you to kind of think, you know, this isn't just a linear, this is move A and we're going to move B and it's going to be no interruption. Nothing that could possibly come from blind side and throw this off that's not wildly obvious, you know? Like, it's, you know, I, I think they're trying to do a little bit of creativity with the writing there, so to speak. That's really about it. I don't have that much else to say, honestly. I hope you enjoyed. Um, you know, I thought this is you know, kind of a quick and easy chapter to kind of digest. But we'll see what it leads into. There's some big things on the horizon.